In this tutorial, we're going to be enhancing the impact and feeling of power of our mages and spellcasters through shader visuals. Along the way, we'll use a simple scripting system to integrate the shader with animations and particle effects, creating dynamic and cohesive spellcasting visuals. This tutorial is targeted towards people with basic Unity knowledge. However, if you're a beginner, it's a great chance to be familiar with the multiple systems of uh, Unity. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to build and implement shaders that enhance the visuals of your spellcasters character animations. Let's quickly take a look at how other games implement a similar effect to what we're going to be building. Here you see Mordekaiser from League of Legends who has this glow effect on his character when he's using an ability. And here you see Deadlock where an enemy is getting shot. When hit, characters in Deadlock get a varying degree of glow on their character. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new project and download the scripts from the GitHub in the description. Then we're going to set up the animation controller and the animation triggers for testing the shader visuals in context, build and animate the shader step by step. And as a final step, we're gonna add uh, ability VFX because what is spell casting without abilities? So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is create an empty Unity project has opened. We're gonna download the free asset pack Frank RPG Mage, which we're gonna be using for the character and the character animations. Once imported, we're going to be using the demo scene as the scene we're going to work in. Most likely you'll see everything in pink. I just create a, quickly a default material for the ground and the rest of the materials from Frank I select and then go to edit and generate the URP materials. Because I just want a, a bare character for the work we're going to do. I'm just deleting all un unnecessary VFX meshes and the text as well. Where if I click play now, you'll see the character immediately animating and actually cycling through all its animations. This is not what I want. I want to be able to manually trigger the animations so that I can animate the shaders accordingly. So at this point, you can import the package in the description and start using the custom scripts along with the tutorial. Where you can use the script called animation trigger on Frank. In Inspector, you see three buttons, trigger one, two, and three, which uh, we're going to use to manually call for animations to help us with the visual feedback. Where I first put down idle animation from the entry, there's always this idle looping. Be sure to set it on looping though. And where I then look for three animations, two simple ones for trigger one and two. And then a third that I'm going to use as a way to showcase what the system can do and invite you to experiment yourself. Really the fun in this is like making your own stuff, of course, where you gotta make sure that um, trigger one, two, and three, the names on the top left are the same as the ones in your script. Make sure that the transitions going from the idle to the animations have the, the right trigger set as condition and the exit time off while going back from the animation to the idle have exit time on, otherwise it would go instant. All right, so if you have set everything up correctly, you should now be able to manually trigger uh, the animations you've chosen by clicking uh, trigger one, two, and three. Meaning I'm now all set to start building my shader and animate it based on the character animation visuals. It's time to create the shader using shader graph. I'm uh, creating a lit shader. I'm immediately making a variant, which is the actual material I'm putting on the character. So not the main shader, but the variant of the shader where any changes on the main shader will automatically be updated on all the variants. Before we start building the shader, let's quickly refresh our minds with um, the effect we're building. So Mordecai is there from League of Legends has this uh, glow effect around him when he activates abilities. And if you damage enemies in deadlock, you see also a similar effect. Both of these shaders seem to be using Fresnel on their effect, which is um, an effect created by a camera view direction, vertex angle. However, this in shader graph, get the Fresnel node and you're done. Uh, because I want to control the, the size of the glow, I create a float that I call size, which I plug into the power where the lower the number is, the bigger the size of the Fresnel on the character is. And I also want to control the intensity of the glow, which is why I add a multiply before I stick it into the emission, but also a float in the A of the multiply. Where now, if I press play and trigger an animation, yes, I have the glow, but it's not animating with the animation yet. So it's not going from dim to bright to dim which is where the second script comes in, which is the shader animator, where you gotta plug the 
mesh renderer and the material that you're changing the variables on into the inspector, public variables. You don't plug the main shader in, but the, sh the actual shader that's on the character renderer, which is the variant, and can fill in the exact name of the variable that you want to change, and it creates a curve. which has a y-axis that you can set with the min y and max y, and it has an x-axis that you can set with the total animation time. Since the total animation time uh, on the curve is in seconds and not normalized, it actually changes the length of the curve, where you can now animate, which um, if you filled in everything correctly, it should animate on uh, the trigger and you can line it up with uh, with animation that you've chosen and uh, start building your visuals. Since the glow increases in size, the closer it gets to zero, I want to keep it there a bit to give it a bit more stay on the apex of the animation to go for that max animation impact enhancement. What I would like to do now is increase the buildup of the shader animation on the next animation. Now how I'm going to do that is uh, creating logic that, that allows for the glow to go from other body parts towards the hand. To do this, we need a couple of data points to feed the shader to make this kind of logic work, which are the location of the hand that the glow is building towards and all the other verts of the character and the relation between the two. So point of the hand, then you can simply use the world position node to get the vectors of all the individual verts of the mesh. And by checking the distance between these two nodes, uh, you can create a mask, which you can multiply by a value that we're gonna use in the shader animation script to create the gradient. So the way this mask work, when you compare the distance between one vector position that you're gonna feed the shader and all other positions of the verts of the mesh the closer the verts get to the reference point the closer it gets to zero because a distance between two points on in the same space is zero meaning it's black meaning that the further away you get from the reference point the wider the verts are gonna be and if you then multiply this value you get a gradient where the gradient is a bit too gradienty, <laughs> if that's a word I wanted to be able to control the smoothness or hardness of the of the flow effect. You can do this by using a smooth step, by plugging two float values in. I'm using three over five. It's like the right balance between smoothness and hardness for what I was going for. Where I also wanted to be able to control the color. So I plugged in a multiply before it went into the emission where I then connected the Fresnel effect to change it from a full body where the glow is now going towards the hand, blowing from the other body parts where I also connected a color to a multiply right before going into the emission so that I could adjust the color where I then can animate. So I have uh, this extra distance multiply variable that I need to fill in. So I add a new variable, I fill it in, I set the min y, max y to 10. Then I quickly copy the curves from the first trigger to get me going. See the timing is uh, a little bit off because of course it's a different animation. Where the glow is a little bit later here, that already looks good. Where I now want to use my new variable, the variable that's supposed to create this buildup effect from legs to torso to arm where you see me here trying to work out uh, what's the right speed of the float increase to get a good looking build up over the length of the animation so it's starting to look quite all right for the shader animation so by playing a bit with the curves and adjusting timing here and there by animations that you're seeing it's quite easily you can create uh, nice glow effects two animations done using the shader animation script and i think it's now time to spell vfx i'm gonna do this by uh, quickly importing another free asset pack magic effects free uh, where i'm using a simple spell spawning script that takes a prefab a spawn location a delay time after pressing the trigger and then a destroy time which is just 
particle is, it's just to destroy the particle and not flood like uh, your whole hierarchy with all the particles you can spawn. There are, of course, way better ways to handle this, and every project's going to have their own implementation. But for this project and developing visuals in an easy-to-use, easy-to-understand way, a system like this is enough to get you going. Since my uh, character glow was already tealish, teal I, uh, I saw a snow slash that I simply put in the prefab to spawn, set a timing, and then set a location reference from uh, a bone or a or any other game object that you uh, want a particle to spawn on. And that's, that's it really. Then it's just adjusting the timing so that, that it matches the animation. And then you're good to go. Where the second animation also needs a VFX. You can use the same script. And this effect is uh, more of a ground-based effect, it seems, from the staff. So. All you gotta do with the script is uh, throw the prefab in, define a timing when it needs to spawn, and define uh, location reference. With all this new knowledge, we can start working on uh, the final shader animation, where this is uh, a more interesting animation. It's like three parts to it. It's like a hit, hit, uh, jump, boom, which uh, immediately also means that the animation is longer. So the animation time needs to be set and see how we can create this scaling intensity in the shader as the animation progresses. And trying to find the right timing of the glow size increases. And then for this animation, also looking for a couple of VFX, because what is a spellcaster without his um, abilities? Where there was kind of a happy accident, I uh, mistakenly put both the left and the right hand on the same timing, I think. Instead of uh, it being slash, slash, jump, boom, it was uh, just the second slash or the third. It was just one slash and both fired and it looked kind of cool. So <laughs> I kept it and just added uh, a fourth. You know, if you keep an open mind, you never know from what angle inspiration will hit you. Oh, I've just been aligning the timings, but uh, what the animation shows and uh, looks pretty cool. This kind of system allows you to change stuff quickly. Uh, let's just keep going for a little bit where I'm not gonna change a couple of things around, uh, change the color to red and uh, change the animation in the animation controller where I wanted to make a fire-based uh, animation just to quickly showcase that um, iterating and uh, Creating different things goes, can go quite quick. And even you using simple shader techniques and animating them like this really already really enhances the power and impact of your spellcasting on your character animations. So I got you a bit inspired to uh, start experimenting on your own. And uh, yeah, good luck.